Hello hey friends, are you looking for the latest technologies and advances in stable diffusion right now, but feel the updates in Automatic 11.11 are just a little too slow right now? Then you need to have a look at Vlad Diffusion. And the community is all over it right now. And what makes the community love it? Among other things, AMD NVIDIA and Mac M1 support, Torch 2, SDP for faster generations over Xformers, quicker startup time, inbuilt extensions, but there's a lot more. Let's find out together. All right, so first we're gonna get this installed. And if you aren't interested in that, you can just skip forward to when we're using the tool. But you're gonna use the link in the description below, and you're gonna get to GitHub and to Vlad Mandich fork of Automatic 11.11. And if you scroll down a bit, you're gonna see in the install here, you're gonna need Python, Git, and if you're on NVIDIA, you're gonna need the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit, and then we're gonna clone the repository. So let's do it all in order. First, you're gonna go to Python and make sure here that you do not, I repeat, do not download the latest version. You can't use Python 3.11 because it doesn't support PyTorch right now. So what you're gonna do is you can find in the list here, and I recommend using a 3.10. I usually do 3.10.7 because that's always worked for me. You can probably, if there's an app 0.8 or 0.9 or whatever, you can probably use that. Just make sure it's 3.10. Press the download, scroll down, then find your OS, either Mac or Windows. I have a PC, so I'm on Windows. I'm gonna press the Windows installer here. I'm downloading this, start the .exe. Once you get this open, you need to click this little checkbox here, add Python to path, very important, and then just install now. This will be a fairly quick process depending on your computer. We're closing that, so we can close this Python page. Now we're gonna go to Git, so you can either Google that, or check the link in the description. And again, check your OS. I'm gonna download for Windows. I want the 64-bit Windows set up. I'm opening that. Yes, I wanted to make changes and I am installing. Now it's extracting all the files and installing Git on my computer. And after this, we're gonna continue with the NVIDIA CUDA tool because I use a NVIDIA card, the RTX 3080 to be specific. We're gonna close that one the Windows one. I'm just gonna pick the 11 here, local one. Now this file is fairly big, it's a three gigabyte file. If you have problems downloading this, you can use the network installer. Then you have a smaller file and it will install in bits, the bits you need. Then you're gonna open that exe, just press OK here. And now the installer is extracting on your computer. And as soon as this is completed, the toolkit installation will start. And again, it's a fairly easy process, just takes a little bit of time, this one. Agree and continue. We're just gonna run the express recommended here. Now it says here for me, no supported version of Visual Studio is found, uh, but we're not gonna use any of that. So we're just gonna check the box and press next. So it is now finished and don't be afraid if your screen flickers, that's gonna be completely normal. At least during the installation, not after it. We're gonna de-click those and then just close. Now we're gonna go back here and there's a little snippet of code here, which is this, git clone and then the link there. So you're just gonna copy paste that. Well, first copy, then you're just gonna go into your folder when you want it. And this is my users folder. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna type CMD. That will open a window for me here. So this is where I will paste it and then press enter. Now, if you have automatic 11.11 already installed, this might be an error that you get. Fatal destination path automatic already exists and it's not an empty directory because it uses the same folder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new folder here. Let's call it Vlad. And now you can either do the same thing, go CMD here, or if you're in the previous, you can go CD, which is change directory. Either way is fine. So now it's downloading all the files from GitHub. And now that is finished, you can go inside your folder and here are all the files. And it's very similar to Automatic 11.11 because it is a fork of that. And like it says here, it's gonna be the same thing. Run desired startup script to install dependencies and extensions and start server, which is the web UI. In Automatic 11.11, it's called web UI user. Here is just web UI. So we're gonna run this batch file here, and this will be the main part of the actual installation. Now the git clone, that was just to copy the files or download the files from GitHub to your computer. And this will be probably the lengthiest process of the installation.
once that's finished, you're going to see something like this. And this took quite a while for me. And it looked like it had stopped several times, but it didn't. So just stick with it. Probably took like 20 minutes on my fairly fast computer. Anyway, you're going to copy paste this, open a browser window, paste that in. Then you're going to be inside Vlad Diffusion. And now this is fairly similar to Automatic 1111. It's a, it's a little different style. There are themes to choose from. The base is kind of the same. So you have from text here, which, you, which is your text to image. You have from image, which is your image to image. The image info is the PNG info tab. You can drop your image here and get the info from previously rendered image. The process here, that's uh, what used to be the extra. So here you can upscale, do a batch process, stuff like that. Let's just do a quick render and see how this works. I'm going to load a style here and you can find these in the video description. There's a link and these are all free to download. You can select multiple here if you want the positives or for anyone. I'm just going to use these two for now. I'm going to put beautiful Nordic forest with the fjord. I'm going to up the depth to 25 at Euler A. I'm just going to run a regular old image here. Nothing special there, just a regular old image. As you can see here, you have control net already installed. You don't need to install that manually. So that's great, especially for any beginners out there. You don't need to, um, well, you don't need to manually install it. Let's check the extensions here. The inbuilt extensions are, you have the LORES, you have the, the LDSR, the Scunit and Swinar, that th those are for, for upscaling mainly. Uh, the Lycoris is installed. You have a clip interrogator and a multifusion upscaler. You had control net that we talked about. I thought we were going to have Dream booth, I was under the impression that we are. That doesn't seem to be the case. Let's check the available extensions here. So we have Shivam's dream booth here. However, it doesn't seem to be auto installed. So we're just going to install that. And if you scroll up, you can see it's processing here. If you wonder what's going on, you can also see inside your now, if you're brand new to stable diffusion and generative AI, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what this is. Here is we're going to create your image and we, we just created a, a Nordic Fjord here. So this will be where you put in what you want. Let's say we have man on ship here. And now there are a lot of settings that you can choose from. The sampling me method is basically the tool that creates your image. You can mostly leave this at default for now. I usually use Euler A at a sampling step of 25 but because I am. I've been doing that for a long time. It's fast and it works well. Now, if I do nothing at all and generate, I'm just going to get an image of this. Now, we didn't get a man on a ship, but at least I got a ship. You might need to get, create more batches to get your desired result. Anyway, the sampling steps is how many steps if you see it as a frames to generate your image. So it will take 25 frames or 25 steps to reach this image. This image just starts as noise. And then you can see that when you generate that it starts as noise and then it takes, well, it's too fast for you to see. Each step makes the image a little bit better each time. And the width and the height here is basically just the size of the image. The default is 512 by 512 for most models. There are some that do 768 as well, but if you don't have a specific model for that, this is what you're going to use. The batch count and the batch size, that's how many images or how many batches you're going to create. And the CFG scale here, that's how much the AI will listen to your prompt up here. So a high scale force the prompt onto the image and a low scale will let the AI be more creative. So if you set this to zero, we have again man on a ship. We might not even get a man. We got a ship burning here. Let's try and up this. We're going to break the image probably, but we might be closer to what we want. See the image is broken, but we have a man on the ship. So you need to fine tune this like 7 to 14 ish is, is usually a good number. Some models like to go lower. Now the clip skip here is a fairly advanced setting and not something that you might want to play with if this is your first rodeo. But think of the model as having layers. So let's say that you want a person that will be your first layer. Now, the second layer could be man or woman, for example. And let's say the third layer could be, say you have person, man, then it goes to, for the third layer, it could possibly be like son or grandfather, 
And it goes on and on and on, like putting stuff into groups. Now, this is extremely simplified. It's not exactly like that, but it's a good way of thinking. And you might just want a person or a man. But if you want to play around with that, I suggest that you find a more detailed, in-depth tutorial or Reddit guide for that. This is not it. The seed is a randomized generation. So each time you will get a new image and a new noise. If you want to recreate something, you can reuse this seed. So now we have this seed and that's locked to this image with, well, this seed and this prompt along with the, these styles and all these settings will create this image. And now you can recreate this. It will give you the exact same image. By using this, you can have an image, you can change the prompt or the settings to well, fine tune it a little bit. You're not going to get like, it's going to be hard to create exactly this person with the different colored eyes. I would recommend doing like in painting for that, but it's good to know what the seed is. So those are the basic settings of text to image. If you're doing image to image or what they call from image here, you have a different set of settings. Mostly you have the same. However, you have one major difference, which is the denoising strength. And that's the most important part about image to image. And I have a full tutorial on this. You can check that out in my, on my channel. But the denoising strength is how much the new image will retain from the old image. So let's, let me show you. Let me put this to zero and generate. Now you will get the exact same image. And if you put this to one, you will get a completely new image. So what this does is you can play with the denoising strength here and change parts of the image while still keeping some parts. Now we're fairly low here, 0.3. So there will be changes to image, but they're not really noticeable. But you can see here, like the light here is very different. Oh, well, not very, but it's different from the one here. This light is different, this one. And you know, there are changes in the image. If you would want to retain a lot of the image, you have to go around the 0 0.5, 0 0.6, but you still want the changes. Now you can see we're starting to get more change colorings in his face. The markings are gone, resembles the character, but it's not exactly the same. And then you can play with the value. And now this is just a quick look at the image to image settings. Quickly looking over process here. This is where you upscale mainly. So once you have an image here, you can resize it up to well eight times here. But let's say you want to make it two times bigger. You can change the upscaler and they differ slightly, but uh, honestly, not a lot. Swin so IR is great for architecture, for example. It adds a lot of fine details, but it might be too much for some images. For example, faces. I usually use Lang shows together with Swin IR, sometimes ESR jam. Now we have an image that is upscaled two times. Now it's not a great result because our image was just a test from uh, 512, 512. What you can do, especially when you're working image to image, is you can change this to, well, 10, 10, 24, 10, 24. That way you can get a 512 image to go to 1024, retain some of the qualities of the older image. So as you can see on this one, the image is now fairly changed, but we have more detail in the image as it's a, a double resolution. Let's create a character here. A woman having coffee in a coffee shop or cafe. Same thing, I guess. And we're going to add another style here from our styles. We're going to add, no, you know what? I'm feeling Ghibli for this. We're going to generate four of these. As you can see, we didn't get a live render pre preview here. So let's see if we can find that in the setting. In automatic 1111, it was on here. We have a live preview. So this is the slider that we now it's set to minus one. And this is, we're going to set this to one, be able to see the full render here. And if we generate again, we should be able to see here. There we go. You can see all the images rendering. And this is kind of interesting. You get to see them together. Usually, was that a setting maybe? Um, here we go. Show previews of all images generated in a batch as a grid. So if you uncheck that, you're just going to see them one by one. There, you see? And if you go back, you can see them, well, as we saw them previously as a grid. So that's kind of cool if you're doing a lot of them.
Now, if you have a lot of models already installed, you can go into the settings here. If you check system paths here, you can actually change to your automatic 1111 folder or wherever you have your models. So this is where I have mine. So I'm just going to apply the settings here and I can refresh. And now I have a lot of models here. We're going to use the colorful one now because that's fairly popular in my community. And if you don't have any model, you're going to be stuck with the 1.5 base model. But I would recommend that you go to Civitai, download a model that you like, deliberate for example, then go inside your folder where you installed previously, go inside models, stable diffusion and just drop them in here. Now let's do the same thing here. Woman in a coffee shop. See how we have our woman in a coffee shop. They're fairly low res. They're just 512 by 512. If you'd want to improve on these, you could take, for example, this one here. You have the little arrow here. It says move to that part. So we're going to go to image, which is our image to image. And here we can change this to, for example, 1024, 1024. We're going to change the denoising strength, which is how much the image will change. So zero will be no change. One will be full change. We're going to keep this at 0.6 for now. Now, this is not a tutorial on the settings. You can check my ultimate guide or more specifically like an in painting tutorial, stuff like that. If you want to know more about the settings. And here we have our 1024, 1024 version of this. Now it's not a perfect image in any way, I wouldn't say, but just from a quick generation, I mean, hey, it's fairly good. This is just to test out the tool anyway. Now if you find something like, you can take this image for example, you can either send this to in painting, like in automatic 1111. We could uh, paint her face here, give that some detail. We're going to change this to woman face. Phase, and we're going to change this to in paint area only masked, which will only affect this. Again, if you want to know more about the settings, I have an in painting tutorial. Just check my channel. It's going to be fairly easy to find. If I remember, I'll also put the link up somewhere at the top. I guess you'll find it. Now we've got some more details in the face here. Now it's still a very smooth out image, but that's because of the styles that we use the, the digital painting kind of style. If you want some more realistic, you have to use some of the other styles. Now, if you go into the settings again here, you can find user interface down here. If you go to the bottom here, you have UI theme. If you click this little thing here, you have a lot of different themes. So let's see what we have here. We have the default one. I think you're all going to be fairly familiar with that one. Now we have to restart every time, sadly, to change the theme. It's on the features list to um, be updated. But here you can see this default theme. So if you've been using Automatic 11, it looks exactly like this, either black or white. Let's uh, check some of the other themes. Here's the glass one, just gray, and you have the little edge here. So it looks a little glassy, it's a little web 2.0. Here's the windows one. Now this is very blue. So if you're into blue, this uh, could be something for you. Check the steampunk. You should like the steampunk, cyberpunk kind of things. This is all right. Little black and gray and some yellow there on the important generate button. Now the cool part here isn't that there are themes, but actually more that you can get any theme that you want. So here we go, Gradio Soft. Now this is, uh, I think this is more in line with what I would prefer. You're going to have to check these out for yourself and see which one you prefer. So let me know in the comments what you think. Do you enjoy that Vlad makes uh, quicker updates? He has the extensions pre-built into the installer. Or do you enjoy the classic old automatic 1111? I, for one, will keep an eye on both of them and see which one gets ahead. As of right now... Vlad is making a lot of changes and updates to his fork and uh, with automatic 1111 as of today, which is the 16th of April, hasn't updated anything in three weeks. I guess we'll see what happens. But the community is loving this, so test it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this content, like and subscribe if you wanna. But if you don't, that's fine too. I'm not your boss. Do whatever you want. As always, have a good one. See ya.